hey Juan, let's make this YouTube video of me doing Botox on myself, because our last video got like three million hits or something like that. I'm Dr. Kat. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I'm a wife, a mother, and I'm the pioneer of vaginal cosmetic surgery. This looks incredible. I went to Harvard for college, then I went to UCLA for medical school, and then I completed two residencies at UCLA. I'm going to do Botox on myself. Most of my patients come from my social media. Social media has allowed me to film the entire process of surgery, the recovery, and long-term results. You can see how perfectly even and smooth it is. I personally have patients who travel from all over the world to Beverly Hills to have plastic surgery with me. I'm really picky about the way I do Botox, and so I put the exact same amount perfectly symmetric. I believe that God gave me this amazing talent, and I truly believe plastic surgery is my destiny. Okay, I'm gonna move my face a lot so you can see it before. That looked crazy when I was doing no. it. My name is Jessie Peralta. I'm 37 years old. I was a pussycat doll, and now I just want a pretty pussy. I'm checking in with Dr. Kat. Perfect. If you just have a seat, Dr. Kat will be with you in a moment. Thank you. You're welcome. Being a dancer, I've been very in touch with my body. But when I had my daughter, I suffered some birthing injuries to my vagina. Hi there, Jessie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. How are you? Good. Tell me what brings you in today. I had an unmedicated childbirth okay. three years ago. It's heroic <laughs> having a baby the way that you did. I mean, it's truly amazing. I had some tearing on my labia. They tried to sew it up. I could feel the thread being pulled through the skin, but because I didn't have any pain medication, I pretty much wimped out. You didn't wimp out. I mean, who could have sutures in that area without any numbing medication? I mean, I'm sure that was very challenging and painful. As a woman, you want to feel sexy, and it's just made me very self-conscious. Let's say a hook ripped your cheek in half. Could you still eat? Yeah, I can chew on the other side of my mouth. Can you still smile? Yeah, it looks really crazy. Everything functions well, but it just looks a little crazy. So if you can have it fixed, why not? Prior to the, the injury, I was much, much more free sexually with my husband. And ever since, I'm not confident enough to allow <laughs> the access that he once had. Access has been denied. I did have an experience with a male OBGYN who told me, oh, why would you do that? It's not worth it. And you just look like any old woman that's had a baby and who cares? And it's like, I care and that's <laughs> that's enough. That's right, enough no, of a reason. Exactly right. And I'm, I'm so glad that you didn't let that discourage you or make you feel bad in any way. Yeah, exactly. You caring is enough. That's See, the most important. And you understand completely because you're another important. woman. I do. I <laughs> completely understand. If a man were to experience some crazy penile accident, I'm sure he would have that fixed immediately. So like, why can't women feel that same sense of urgency? I found you on Snapchat. Oh, OK. And I was just so inspired by you and just found it fascinating to watch you do surgeries oh, <laughs> and to talk so about sweet. like your yeah. perfectionist tendencies. Really like 100% of my effort is focused on having it look as perfect as possible. So what we'll do is I'm going to give you a mirror and then you can use the Q-tip to kind of point out what specific areas are bothering you. The main concern is this left side tear where it pretty much went all the way down to the bone. I mean, it's the entire length of your labia. Yeah, I can see. Oh my gosh. And then, <laughs> it must have been so painful. Yes. Actually, you're not missing tissue in that area. It's just that it got pulled apart so it looks like it's in, you know, two pieces. It's like a slice of pizza. Look, <laughs> kind of. Jesse's tears are probably the most extensive I've ever seen. You know, usually when patients come in with a labial tear from delivery, it's like one or maybe two cuts or tears. 
But for her, literally her labia were almost completely shredded. I mean, there was three tears on one side, two on the other. I could only imagine how uncomfortable that would have been for her. You know what, if you've been through that, <laughs> my surgery will be a piece of cake. <laughs> I have never had surgery before. I've never ha really had like strong painkillers before. Oh. <sighs> I'm nervous about that part of it, but there is no one that I trust more with this entire process than Dr. Cat. It's a little nerve wracking, but literally you go to sleep and then you wake up. I'm pretty excited to see. Pretty you know, excited to see it. Once things <laughs> shake out, yeah. Good morning, morning. Jesse. My husband. Good to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you, you so much for being here. Every night, Every like night. when I can't sleep, watch Dr. Cat. I, he <laughs> hears your voice. The husbands were like, okay, I'm tired of going to bed with you because <laughs> literally I just hear your voice in my bed. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> true. I, and I drew um, kind of like a representation so we can go over your anatomy. This is what your vagina looks like. On this left side, this is where you have like the really deep cut. I'll have to basically bring this together. And then I'm gonna just continue this cut down. You know what I mean? So that way you can sort of see the final result will end up being just this gentle yeah. curve. On this side, bring these two together. So that way it'll create the best possible symmetry. Do you have your work cut out for you? <laughs> I know it's complicated. Okay, so today it's all about you. And um, I'll go check your room, and you just hang out together, and I'll have the nurse come grab you. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Most people feel that a risk from labiaplasty would be loss of sensation, but none of the cuts or any part of the suturing goes anywhere near the clitoris. Honestly, most of my patients actually feel an increase in sensation after the surgery because they have less tissue that's covering the clitoris, and also, there's just less irritation when there's less labia being pulled in different directions. I meditate before every surgery to help stay focused and to be at the highest level of functioning. For Jessie's labiaplasty, I'm going to reconnect the torn pieces of her right and left labia and refine and shape both sides to make them tucked in and symmetrical. I'm gonna first start with the very, very deep tear that she has. Right there. The tear is so close to the clitoris. They put stitches on. She had no numbing. That must have been so painful. The operating room is, it's like my temple. This like sacred, peaceful, highly controlled environment. It allows me to channel my energy in a really focused way to give my patients the best possible result. All right, Eli, so this is a piece from the right side. Thank you. During labiaplasty surgery, I use a diagram to show exactly where the pieces came from and then to show how I should piece everything back together. Almost like a puzzle. Here, Eli, here's the big piece from the left. Thank you. This looks incredible. It turned out way better than I expected. She has a really nice, neat, symmetric, and tucked in shape, just like she wanted. I consider this to be a designer vagina. I did trademark the term Prisicology. Does that make me a Prisicologist? <laughs> Today is officially the one month post surgery mark, and I am celebrating. Yay! Jesse! Oh my God. I've missed you. Aww. When Jessie first came to me, her vagina had gone through some major trauma. She had suffered extensive labial tears during childbirth, and it had affected her and her relationship with her husband in so many ways. 
she really felt like her life just wasn't the same. So I can't wait to see how she's doing and how she's recovered from her labiaplasty surgery. Tell me what's been going on. A lot of getting it on, I guess, has been going on. Well, that's a good yeah. thing. Everyone <laughs> needs that. Everything is working <laughs> just like we wanted to, so. Okay. I'm going to have you change, and then we'll take a look together. OK. okay. Jessie is just glowing. And just seeing her and how this surgery has changed her life, I mean, this is the reason why I love doing what I do. Once the healing period was all done, then it was back to normal life, but a much more confident, sexy version of it. Back at work, yes. doing dance. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're still able to be pretty active, which was awesome. Yes. So. Before, I know you had these like double tears, so I was able to piece all of these little cuts together. And now you look like this. Really pretty. <laughs> Let's look together. I mean, you look beyond. I mean, it looks awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you look amazing. Perfect. Amazing. <laughs> Plastic surgery should never be about someone feeling like they're not good enough, so they need to make a physical change. It's about caring for yourself, doing something that empowers you in order for you to feel better. But in the end, what is most important is how Jessie feels about Jessie. I'd been promising since we had the baby, oh, I'm gonna get the, you know, the sexy lingerie back out, and I'm as soon as this and as soon as that. And finally, all the little outfits came out, and I just let him have at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy for you. She's so welcome.